Very good. So for this uh, final presentation before the before the break, uh, so Jitendra and Solana are going to explain functional rate theory for the index distribution of of uh, for the little random matrices, and as it was a project which I supervised. So please, uh, Jitendra and Solana, uh, you can start. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so as uh, Isaac has already mentioned, uh, we'll study uh, diluted random matrices, uh, specifically the index distribution using functional rate theory. And this project was uh, done with Svetlana. Uh, she's from QMUL um, and myself under the supervision of Professor Isaac. Um, so this is the organization of the talk. Uh, in the beginning, I'll just give a brief introduction of the problem. Uh, and then just motivate the replica method. And we'll explain the replica method in the next part. And then uh, after we get, a I mean, we give a brief introduction to the derivation, not the details of the derivation. Uh, we get a final equation, uh, which has to be solved, uh, but uh, it can't be done analytically. So we use a um, numerical method, which is population dynamics algorithm. Uh, and using that, one can compute uh, some interesting quantities, which I'm going to describe. Uh, and then uh, we'll be talking about the results and finally the conclusions. So, so like, I mean, I'm just going to make a <laughs> statement here. Uh, generally, we physicists think that we study truth, but the reality is it's the model of
uh, 5 over n independently. Uh, yeah, so uh, on average, each vertex of the graph will have five neighbors. And we are studying the adjacency matrix of uh, such a graph. It's a Hermitian matrix and it has real eigenvalues. So uh, what uh, one want to study about um, uh, eigenvalues? First quantity is like empirical spectral uh, density. So we put delta function into each eigenvalue. And afterwards, we are renormalizing this measure with coefficient one over n to make such a measure a probability measure. And we study this. Also, one can study uh, number statistics. So the fraction of eigenvalues between X and Y. Here, we will focus on index distribution. It's a fraction of eigenvalues that are less than uh, X. Uh, yeah, so um, index distribution for uh, one random matrix is a function. And uh, so we kind of generate the uh, distribution on uh, the space of all the functions. And uh, we want to study the uh, asymptotics of the probability that so this particular index distribution equals to this particular function when n tends to infinity. And uh, we will uh, calculate uh, the mean of index distribution and uh, we will calculate the covariance of index distributions in uh, points x1 and x2. So one can reduce uh, studying uh, these, uh, pro these asymptotics into studying the cumulant generating functional. Um, so uh, this probability will be asymptotically equal to exponent of n times um, Mm, this integral of uh, mu of x, k of x, minus uh, cumulant gener generating functional uh, into in, in uh, the mu star that extremizes such a thing. Yeah, so we will focus on uh, studying the cumulant generating functional. And if we study, uh, in, and if we study what uh, it is, we can get the uh, probability and we can get some quantities with, that are uh, connected to original um, index distribution. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so Jitendra will introduce you the replica method to study cumulant generating functional. Uh, yeah, uh, so now that we have this cumulant generating functional, uh, we would like to, I mean, I mean, this is the expression for cumulant generating functional. We would like to compute uh, this uh, integral. This doesn't look scary right now, but uh, so the method we use is replica method, which is seems to be very powerful method. We are just, I mean, uh, it seems very powerful. Um, so like, let's uh, talk about how to frame the problem. Uh, first of all, uh, to proceed further, we need to rewrite the index, which is the fraction of eigenvalues, which is less than X in terms of theta functions. And here we use a very special property of log for because we know that log function has a branch cut for negative X axis. So as you go along the, I mean, from positive to negative Y uh, along negative X, uh, we see a jump in log value by two pi iota. And that jump 
can be used uh, to represent theta function uh, as this expression. Using this expression, uh, the index, the fraction of eigenvalues can be represented in terms of this, uh, this log of z by z of x star, uh, where z is actually nothing but a determinant over a determinant of the random matrix minus uh, this x, star, x eta times the identity matrix, uh, the square root of that. And uh, using this um, representation of index uh, fraction of eigenvalues, uh, we can, and discretizing this sum integral uh, into L boxes, uh, we can rewrite this expression uh, in terms of Z as this. Uh, here, one thing to notice is here we have delta X times mu. This delta X times mu divided by pi i is actually denoted by NL plus and the minus of delta X mu divided by pi i is divided, uh, uh, represented by NL minus. Uh, now the very important trick, uh, which is the replica trick uh, is to, even though we know this NL plus and NL minus are, as you can see, imaginary, we assume them to be positive integers. This is something related to the analytical continuation. And once we do that, we can use the representation of Z function, uh, I mean Z, uh, to rewrite, it's like a partition function, the representation of Z uh, to simplify this expression because we have already assumed them to be positive integers, we can write them as n plus copies. So it's like creating copies um, for uh, Z and similarly NL minus copies and create, which is like creating copies for Z star. Um, once we have this, uh, now like, yeah, we have this expression, which is very complicated looking. And this is, but when it's actually a microscopic description. Now we, and there are summations in all involved inside it. So it's, it seems natural to go to a more field theoretic description, microscopic description, going to such a microscopic description using this uh, P and P hat. Uh, and we are not showing the expressions of P and P hat. Uh, we can rewrite the cumulant generating function, exponential of cumulant generating functional as this expression, which is a functional integral over P and the conjugate of P field uh, and exponential of minus N times uh, action. Now to solve this kind of integral, uh, a very like common statistical physics, I mean, very common in statistical physics is a trick of saddle point approximation, which says that where you have an integral which has a weight, I mean the rate N, uh, times some function s of x, such an integral can be approximated uh, log, I mean, uh, asymptotically represent, I mean, it is asymptotically equivalent to exponential of n times the maximum of s, which is like s, s prime is zero, where whatever x where s prime is zero, uh, that will be the x which will approximate this integral the best. Uh, using this approximation for this uh, functional integrals, uh, what we get is a self-consistent equation for P and P hat. Um, now we have a, we have to solve this self-consistent equation. It looks, I mean, we haven't shown the expression, but they look uh, terrible. So uh, to actually proceed further, we use a replica symmetry ansatz and which is a like application of definity mm -hmm. theorem. Uh, Svetlana will describe what is definitive theorem and what exactly we do um, here. Suppose uh, that uh, we have n variables. We uh, call them exchangeable if the joint distribution of x1 uh, and xn from, uh, from x1 to xn equal to joint distribution of uh, their permutation. So if variables are exchangeable, it doesn't mean that they are independent. And definite uh, theorem tells us the following. So uh, suppose that we have x1, xn that are exchangeable. Yes, we uh, can build all uh, such um, mm, sets of variables uh, the following way. First of all, we choose delta uh, according to some distribution mu. Uh, uh, then in, for each delta, we uh, choose uh, the distribution uh, P delta. 
So firstly, we, we are choosing delta according to distribution mu. Afterwards, we are uh, choosing x1 variables from x1 to xn uh, independently according to distribution p delta. Yeah, and uh, we uh, rewrite our um, uh, field uh, p the following way. Uh, to the end of the day, uh, in um, p mean, uh, we uh, have variables that are linked to n plus n tech minus uh, exchangeable. Yes, and uh, uh, afterwards uh, we generate such a density um, W. That means that there exists uh, such a density W that uh, the following expression holds. Yes. Uh, so we had self-consistent equation for uh, P. We put uh, the previous expression into a self-consistent equation for P. And what we get is uh, the expression for uh, W. So if we, don't, if, we, if we know W, we know P. If you know P, uh, we know cumulant generating functional from here. So um, uh, this is how the expression for W looks. Here we did the following. We had variables delta S uh, before. So we had uh, variables delta I that were linked to each uh, bulk. So originally we had one big bulk and divided it into small bulks. So variables were connected to each bulk. Afterwards, we uh, make uh, this thing continuous and we look at W of the function delta of X. And uh, this is uh, how W of the function delta of X looks like. And uh, we, uh, if we know the function W of delta of X, we will know cumulant generating functional. Yes, and uh, yeah, and here is N is the normalizer. Yes. So if you know cumulant generating functional, we will know uh, mean um, mean value that is the first derivative of uh, cumulant gener generating functional. We can calculate it uh, through W. And uh, we know uh, covariance uh, that is the second derivative of uh, cumulant generating functional. And uh, it's also can be calculated through W. And um, we, Jitendra will explain you further. So we have a self uh, consistent equation for W. Jitendra will explain you further how we calculate W. Um, yeah. uh, so now, as we can see here, like uh, to compute these things, we need this uh, here W, this W is actually the marginal distribution and to compute this, we, I mean, this expression, we need W uh, and to get this W, it's a non-trivial job because uh, how do you solve this kind of equation? So uh, mm -hmm. we use uh, something called Hessian dynamics algorithm. Uh, so think, I mean, uh, the basic idea about the population dynamics algorithm is think of a transcendental equation. How do you solve a transcendental equation? It's like solving for a fixed point, right? But here the fixed point, instead of being a point, it's a function. And to solve that, uh, we use population dynamics algorithm. One uh, like important thing to notice is here, when we say it's a mean, we assume that after taking the functional mu is zero. 
so the self consistent equation which we are interested in solving for the computation of mean and covariance are when mu is zero uh, if the mu is non zero then it's a whole different game i mean it needs a modification of this algorithm so first we'll talk about mu equals to zero and since we haven't computed mu non zero i'll not go there um, so to compute a distribution to find this w how do we go, go about it so we uh, consider a population of deltas uh, and like you have some ns samples i mean members of a population and because you have this expression which says you have to choose the random variable delta from a poisson distribution we have to choose we choose a random variable k from a poisson distribution and k and so using this k we like we pick k members of the population and these k members of the populations are used to update one of the member of uh, the population uh, using this expression which is coming from this delta function this is sort of like a markov chain and this markov chain will eventually reach a steady state and now you'll have an updated population this updated population is actually uh, sampled from this distribution um which is eventually which is which is what we needed um so this is actually a like very deep uh, very interesting algorithm uh, i don't completely understand it uh, but this is the algorithm um using this algorithm we actually try to compute the results but uh, we because of lack of time we couldn't do the exact expressions here we only show the numerical diagonalization of the random matrices uh, we specifically talk about the mean and variance mean and covariance so since this is this talks about the fraction of eigen values less than x the fraction can't be greater than 1 so it has to be a sigmoidal kind of function uh, i mean it has to be increasing function because it's going to keep increasing now for when c is equals to 2 that means the average connectivity is very small if that is the case then you see that this matrix will be sparse if it's a sparse matrix there will be many eigen i mean nodes a vertices where there won't be any edges connected so that those nodes will correspond to zero zero eigen values i mean those vertices correspond to zero eigen values so you you see delta function at zero a big delta function and uh, this is a i mean this is how the density looks like which has a delta function and it's slightly understandable why these jumps are coming in the mean uh, i mean it's understandable why the jump is coming here and here this is because uh, of the delta function here, uh, delta function and similarly then for c is equals to 3 uh, we see the spectral density has a delta function which is very strong at 0 but uh, it's uh, the weight of the delta function is smaller at minus 1 and 1 so we see a huge jump but uh, it's uh, because of the accuracy we can't see i mean visually it's not vis i mean it's not visible here the jumps um similarly for c is equals to 5 uh, now you have bit more less sparse matrix so you have delta functions the strength of the delta functions are reducing so it's actually a jump here but we can't notice it um uh, so this is how the mean looks like uh now the, if you look at the covariance uh, so you have uh, like you want to study the connected correlator of the index distribution at point x1 and index distribution at point x2 uh, to do this connected correlator uh, i mean we compute it numerically uh, we found find some interesting result i mean one interesting result is x1 and x2 can be exchanged because these are numbers of course they can be exchanged but x1 comma minus x2 also has a, a can be exchanged and they'll give the same result which is uh, quite interesting we don't completely understand it uh, right now because it's a preliminary work um, it's a work in progress um, similarly for c equals to 3 uh, one thing i should mention is that uh, the correlation is highest when when x1 and x2 are close to 0 for c equals to 2 similarly for c equals to 3 but c equals to 5 the correlation becomes higher at uh, other values of x1 uh, this is still i mean it's a work in progress as i said uh, we need to understand why this happens um so yeah um, so 
in a sum like uh, to summarize what we have done is actually we are developing this functional rate theory with uh, professor isaac and we computed the mean uh, for the index distribution through new i mean exact diagonalization we would like to verify it we would verify it uh, <coughs> using theoretical um, population dynamics algorithm but uh, that will have to wait for now and similarly correlations also need to be verified and better understood um, thank you Thank you, uh, Litendra and Svelana, for this very uh, interesting presentation. And congratulations for the, for the project you have developed. From my point of view, it was very challenging, uh, theoretically speaking. Okay. So we have time for questions before the first break. So if somebody wants to ask, please uh, go ahead and mute your, the, the microphone. So raise the, use the icon to, to raise the hand. Questions? To, to one it has his hand raised. Go ahead, to one. Uh, yeah. I um, thank you for the talk. I just have one question regarding to the population dynamic algorithm. Uh, you said something about member from an ensemble. What would you mean by member here? Is this a graph from the ensemble of the graph that you generate? Just a question about I don't because I don't know this method. Can you explain a bit? Yeah. So uh, so suppose uh, here we have uh, we want to solve something like this equation. But here there are many delta i's. We are let's say we talk about only one delta i. Let's say some some particular value of delta i. Then we consider just one population. In this population, this is like a sampling. How do you do a sampling? Suppose you have a distribution. You have to sample from a distribution, right? So suppose this is the sample, and we would like to get make this sample look uh, coming from this distribution. To do this, we use this population dynamics algorithm. The, uh, the way to do this is to update these members of the population using this particular, since we have this kind of structure uh, in the consistent equation, we update them using uh, this method. And once we update it for long enough time, it will reach a steady state. I mean, this is a Markov chain of sorts, right? So it will reach a steady state and you'll have a population which will be uh, coming sampled from this distribution. Hmm. It's not about the graph. It's about, uh, it's just a, like, you just want to solve this equation. It's like, you can think of it as independent of the random matrix. Oh. You just want to solve this equation. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay, I also uh, have a question. Uh, Is it? Go ahead. Uh, sorry, it's because ah, Fernando. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have a go question. ahead. Yeah, please. So, uh, first, congratulations for the work. Very, uh, very nice. Very interesting. Can you uh, go back to the population dynamics where you have this uh, mu of x, this function, just for me to understand uh, a bit better. So. Uh, if I understand well what you did now, you plotted, uh, for instance, the index as a function of x. And uh, in this case, you how did you choose uh, mu, mu of x? I mean, uh, you mentioned, uh, sorry, you mentioned something about mu of x. Uh, yes. Uh, so like for computing mean and variance, uh, we have to, we take uh, mu going to zero limit after taking the function. Ah, okay, sure. And uh, and uh, what type of information uh, do you get when you uh, when you consider me uh, arbitrary or uh, yes exactly? I mean because you mentioned at the beginning of functional uh, theory, so I just would like to understand, uh, for instance, for the mean value of i, uh, what do you what do you get in this functional approach? Is is a, is it an, an average over x as well or? Uh, so we actually can compute the asymptotic behavior of the probability given a k function, like given an arbitrary uh, function, it is an increasing function. Based on the mu, we can actually compute how the asymptotic, uh, what will be the asymptotic behavior when k's are actually away from the mean index. I mean, mean index. We can compute this thing, yeah. Some last deviation kind of forms. Uh, so this helps in, okay, the beauty of this method is actually, to be able to relate the correlation of eigenvalues. I mean, we might be able to study the correlation of eigenvalues from this method. Like it's still a work in progress, but it can be done. Yeah, but in principle, you can also compute, uh, if I'm not uh, saying uh, any uh, stupid thing, but uh, in principle, you can. it seems you can also compute, like for instance, the deviation from the, 
from the Wigner, uh, from the Wigner case, from the Wigner, uh, because uh, yeah. in the Wigner case, you can compute analytically the, the function, right? So you can compute this, uh, this uh, fraction of eigenvalues as a function of x, so you know analytically. So in principle, you can also compute deviation from a Wigner. Is that right or? Yeah, oh, so, yeah. so uh, 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 go ahead, Jitendra, because we need to wrap up and then maybe I'll let uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at some point, Sorry. yes. Go ahead, Jitendra. When you mean like Wigner function, is it, are you talking about spacing distribution? Uh, no, I'm talking about uh, just uh, the average index huh, of yeah. the Wigner yeah. case because then you can just obtain by integrating the Wigner law, right? So you can uh, find the function uh, exactly. analytically as a function of x. So I was just wondering if you could compute the uh, fluctuations around the Wigner uh, uh, around the Wigner case exactly with exactly. this functional approach. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And the, and the difference, yes, and I, I will add just more thing. If, if you go to the to the main object, which is uh, putting the probability, you know, the definition, right? Not this one. Yeah, yeah. The, the previous one. So the difference that uh, we do here, uh, Fernando, as opposed to our previous work, is that here with this new method that we, de we develop, uh, we are able to uh, consider the index uh, the, the index number as a, as a random function, as a function of x. Mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. then you, got, you can wonder yourself what is the probability that, that this object as a function takes a given value of a, a yeah. function, okay? So, so yeah, you that, can... Go ahead. No, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead then. Mm -hmm. so, so that means that essentially now you have access to, uh, you may have access to uh, level correlations, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. This is an open problem. In principle, this is what we believe. Okay. And the cool thing about this method, as you know, the thing is very well is like when you now do the, the replica limit to apply replica method, you, you have to you, you have an infinite uh, number of uh, replica indices, right? So you are doing mm -hmm. like a functional mm -hmm. replica limit in the but it seems to work. Anyway, uh, so so we have to wrap up, sorry. Uh, maybe if, if somebody's interested in this work, we can discuss and I have up later on, okay? So Jitendra, Svetlana, thank you very much uh, for this uh, presentation. You did a fantastic job from my part. So shall we thank uh, for the presentation? Thank you very much, guys. Now, so let me stop recording.